So far, we've taken a look at the income statement and how to create one of those using an adjusted trial balance, the statement of owner's equity, and how to create a statement of owner's equity using the adjusted trial balance. And now we are going to move on to the balance sheet and how we can use this information to fulfill our basic accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So just like with every other statement, we are going to start with the headers, the company name, the statement we are working on and the date. Now, the balance sheet is showing the balances and accounts as of a specific period in time. So here we do not need for the month ended. It is simply going to be January 31st and 2000XX. Whoops, one second. Okay, now I went ahead and laid out some areas for us to fill in. We have assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. So earlier in our income statement video, we already categorized each of these different account types. All of our assets were here, liabilities were here, and we have some other information down here. So let's go ahead and start plugging that in. So one thing to keep in mind about the balance sheet is that the first asset you are always going to put down will be cash, no matter what. Now, in this case, for this specific balance sheet, remember we have our two columns. However, we are not going to be separating um, different types of assets, for example, um, current assets and property, plant, and equipment, because all of these right here, these are all current assets. So we are not going to be using our list column. We are going to be moving all the way over to our right-hand column. So for cash, we had 47,000. And accounts receivable, 2,000. For supplies, we had 800. And for prepaid insurance, we had 5,500. Now, once we have all of that information in, we can total up our assets, which is going to be 47,000, 2,800, and 5,500. Now remember, all of this is kind of melding together at this point. So remember what we were saying earlier about when you put in <coughs> some math, you need to use that line to underline it. So let's underline that real quick. There we go. So now it's saying, hey, here we go. We did some math. Underline here is the total of that. So um, one other thing that we really want to do to this number before we move along is, if you recall from our income statement and our statement of owner's equity, uh, we use these double bottom lines here. We um, underlined it twice. And by underlining it twice, we said, here is the ultimate result. Now for your balance sheet, it's a bit of a special case. There are going to be two areas that we are going to be underlining twice. So one of those is going to be our total assets and then we'll take a look at the other one a little bit later. So let's see, now for our liability section, let's take a look at our adjusted trial balance. Now here we could go ahead and separate it according to uh, total liabilities and current liabilities and long-term liabilities. However, we only have one liability account that has a balance in it. So we ha only have that one wages payable that is going to go on our statement. So we are actually just going to put in wages payable. Fix that alignment, there we go. And we are going to input that $700 right away. Now let's take a look at our owner's equity section. Now in this case, we have Christopher Knowles, comma, capital. However, keep in mind, this does not represent our ending capital any longer. In order to find Christopher Knowles capital, we have to move up to our statement of owner's equity. So his ending capital as of that day is not 50,000, it's 54,600. So keep in mind, that's a very important step that you have to follow each time. It's just like the flow of the income statement. So the income statement took net income, and it flowed down to our statement of owner's equity. Now our statement of owner's equity is going to take the ending capital balance and it's going to flow down to our, to our uh, balance sheet. So remember, this is something that is going to happen each and every time, those, that flow of information. And that's why we say that financial statements need to be completed in that specific order. So now we have one more step. 
Here we want to create a line for total liabilities and owner's equity. And our total liabilities and owner's equity is simply the second part of this, liabilities plus owner's equity. So let's add up 700 plus 54,600. Remember, we just did some math, so we are going to need to underline it, and then we have our final result, so we need to double underline it as well. Let's see, here we go. And one thing you are going to notice is that, and this is why we double underline both total assets and total liabilities and owner's equity, they should always equal, no matter what. If these do not equal, you did something wrong. You have to go back and see where the error was and fix it. So keep in mind, there are some little uh, changes that could be made to this to make it a lot more um, detailed. Uh, for example, we could specify that these are current assets. We could specify that this was a current liability. However, we just want to get our feet wet at this point and see how to create a balance sheet. There will be um, more complicated balance sheet examples uploaded, uploaded at a later date. So keep that in mind and keep a close eye on your examples in your textbook. Now, the only other thing that you might want to add, which actually, let's go ahead and add those just so we can see what it looks like, is you might want to add in um, dollar signs. There we go. And let's make this a little wee bit bigger. There you go. Now those dollar signs typically are done for the first number in the series and the second number in the series. So first number in the series, second number in the series. Also, if you have double columns, dollar signs are just going to go in the first number in the column and in the last number in the column. So keep that in mind. Your instructor may want you to use uh, dollar signs um, and they may even be a little bit more strict on how it's done. So pay attention to what they do in your textbook and try to copy that over once you start learning um, how this will actually look for your specific problems that you are going to be working on. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. In the meantime, happy studying.